But tonight, uh, I would like to welcome you to our center. Everyone, this is Brother Dato Jagadishan from Malaysia. He's been a dear friend of mine for many years. I think I even have a picture with Jaga in the late 80s, if that gives you an idea how long we've known each other. He's been with Swami for many years. He's traveled all over the world, spoken in, on every continent, and uh, spread Swami's message in the most beautiful way imaginable. I've watched him give lectures on the Vedas, the Gayatri Mantra. He's a great expert in uh, Swami's teachings and uh, is a, a wonderful example of, his, of Swami's teachings. And so I'd like to welcome tonight uh, Brother Dato Jagadishan and Jaga. Take your time. You're welcome to speak as long as you like. And uh, you can begin anytime. Sairam, Sairam. Thank you, everyone, for joining the Zoom session and giving me a chance to talk to all of you. And I want to thank Jean for uh, giving me the chance to address all of you. Uh, so shall I start with uh, how I became involved with Swami, okay? As I thought, started by telling that I was born in a Hindu family. The people were very, very devoted Hindus. Ganesha, Lord Subramaniam, you know, and people like that. And uh, then my auntie, who is my mother's younger sister, we call her Chinnamma. Chinna means small. Amma means mother, so small mother. She's the youngest. And she became involved with Swami. So she became a, a source of my, my uh, pulling her legs, okay? Every time I go there, I'll ask her, ah, Chinnama, how is Alibaba today? You know, I'll talk like that and they will, they, they don't, don't say that, you know, you, you, you bad boy. Swami, I'll make fun like that. One day on June 8, 1976, uh, somebody from India had come and he was staying in my auntie's house. And uh, I thought, this man is a crazy man. He came to talk about Sai Baba. I said, what's wrong with his fellas, okay? So anyway, I thought he had one virtue. He knew about lucky numbers, okay? So I told my, my late wife, you know, Shanti, who was here at the time. I said, hey, listen, let's go and get some lucky numbers from him. So I walked across to my auntie's house. As I entered my auntie's living room, there on the table was a book with, with a picture of Baba on it, okay? It was not this picture, but anyway, this, like this kind of the book was there on the table. So when I saw this book and I saw Baba's face there, in my mind, I said, Avatar, it seems. That thought that came. I didn't say that. A thought came. And I flicked open the book. And there I saw a picture of an old man. So I asked my auntie, hey, auntie, who is this old man? She said, this is Shildi Sai Baba. I said, who is that? He's a previous incarnation of Sati Sai Baba. I said, oh my God, you mean these guys come in a series? Huh? And that triggered off a discussion. Everybody, come on, don't say that kind of thing. You know what you're saying? Then my auntie told me that when this man from India had come, she had, he had brought a picture, a nice picture of Baba for her. So I said, okay. You know, don't forget my attitude is very arrogant, okay, I must say. I said, okay, hey, where's this picture? I said, it's in the prayer room. So I said, let me go and see. So I got up and walked to the prayer room. My auntie had a nice big prayer room. And as I walked in, I saw this Baba's picture. And then suddenly, Vibhuti became to appear on that picture. It happened simultaneously. You now, as I walked in, Bibudi came. So I thought, hey, my auntie has put some Bibudi on this picture. So anyway, as a traditional Hindu thing, every time you see Bibudi, you take and put on your forehead. Whether you believe or not, separate issue, but put on the forehead. Okay? So I took and put on the forehead and I went back to my living room and told my auntie, hey, Chinnama, uh, wow, Bibudi on your picture. And she had a shock of her life. She said, look at this fella playing the fool. You know, yeah, don't play the fool, she said. I said, no, the picture, the Vibhuti is there. So everybody got up from the living room and rushed to the prayer room. And then everybody fell down and started praying, okay? And I'm sitting there looking, looking uh, stunned at what is going on. What are, they, what are, what are they doing? Uh, what are they doing here? And I, I was sort of grinning to myself, looking at them doing this. Then suddenly someone looked at me, the man from India looked at me. Why are you, why are you smiling? Did you put the Vibhuti, he asked. So I replied, I, I put the Vibhuti or Baba put the Vibhuti all the same, la pray. I said, and I walked back to my living room. So now everybody's in doubt now, whether did I put the Vibhuti 
Oh, did the Vibhuti come by itself? They no one knew. So they all followed me back to the prayer room. Then I'm sitting down there on the on the living room chair. And suddenly a thought struck me, you know, oh my God, I am the fellow who used to go around to homes of Sai devotees in Malaysia and rubbing any picture on the wall. So I'll tell them, hey, what nonsense, Vibhudiya. You guys don't clean your house for one week. You'll get a lot of Vibhudiya, okay? What you're being Vibhudi, Vibhudi. And now I'm sitting down, I think I'm the fellow who made fun of this Vibhudi. And now suddenly everyone is accusing me of putting the Vibhudi on the picture. And I'm the only one who didn't know I did it. I've done it. And Baba had caught me by my neck and like this, you know. And so I was stunned, really. It was a stunning revelation for me. That how come now they're accusing me of putting it? And I didn't do it. So I slowly got up and went back to the prayer room. Everybody followed me. Like Pipe Piper, you know. Everybody followed me to the prayer room. And I said, listen, I told my auntie, auntie, I did not do it. It was here. So then everybody fell and prayed again. So that was then my mother came across from my house, which is next door. And everybody started praying and, and I'm sitting there shell-shocked. So here I was, now that was, a, no one can really tell you exactly when they become Baba Devotee. Okay? I can, June 8, 1976 at 10.30 p.m. You know, that's the time of, I, I, of, my, of my revelation, so to speak. Then, of course, that night I went back to my house and I was really very upset. I was really upset because inside me, my whole belief system had collapsed. And inside me, it's like a volcano, boom, boom, boom. And I felt pain in my chest, okay? I was thinking, what's happening to me now? Huh? My mother saw my, my disturbed uh, appearance. She said, hey, you look very upset. Why don't you go and pray? I said, ah. pray was foreign to me, okay? I said, ah. but I could not take it anymore. The pain was too much. So I told my mother, Ma, I'm going to sleep. My mother's bedroom was downstairs. Mine was upstairs, okay? So I turned around the corner and I quietly went to the bathroom, washed my feet and entered my mother's room. And there, I used to go to my mother's bedroom every day. I'll go and get her blessing before I leave the house, okay? And there was an altar always there, big altar with all the Hindu god forms. I just ignored the altar. Now I'm walking in and there is the light, small lamp, oil lamp, you know, uh, at the bottom of the, of the of the, beside the altar at the bottom. And the light was flickering on the pictures at the bottom. And then I saw to my shock, okay, that there were three pictures. I think Swami Vivekananda and Ramana Maharishi. And the third picture was the picture of Baba, which I never noticed you know, for, so, for so many months I've been there. And I looked at the, this so funny situation, out of the movie kind of thing. I looked at the picture and I shouted at him, okay, hey, who are you? Are you man or God? Why are you doing this to me? Why? Because I was so upset, okay, why are you doing this to me? Why are you doing this to me? I'm shouting at him. And uh, are you man or God? And then suddenly, delivery, the first Baba song appeared. The song exploded through me. And the song was in Tamil. And my Tamil was really very bad. Anyhow, the song came. Then I saw my, my door open. My mother walked in. She saw me sitting there praying. That must have stunned her quite a lot. Okay. Anyhow, that was the first day I turned my hand in prayer to Bhagavan Baba. And then, of course, the rest is history. Okay. So that was the first episode of how Swami caught me by the neck, you know, and said, come. So then about a few months later, I had to go to Europe for, a, I used to go to Europe about three times a year for meetings. I was working in the Ministry of Industry. I was Director of Investment. So what, uh, I used to go to Europe and America. And then in uh, three months later, four months later, I had to go to Europe. Then I told my boss, I like to go to uh, uh, India first for, to see Sai Baba. So he said, okay, you better go, make sure you go to, we took a meeting in Paris. So make sure you come to Paris, okay, for the meeting. So then I, uh, mm -hmm. I uh, what, uh, went and, and uh, flew to India and I was totally, India was a strange land to me. I'd gone to America three times, Japan three, two or three times, France also, but India had never been there okay, because mm -hmm. there's no, there was no what uh, interest for me to go to India because India was not a, a source for investments those days. Now, of course, India is different. Okay? I'm talking about what, uh, many years ago. At the time I was 32. Now I'm 76. Okay, so you can imagine how many years ago. And a uh, big adventure I had there. And I was in, uh, ended up in, in uh, Puttapati. Uh, and suddenly Baba comes to me 
walks from, from the open the door, he comes out, he comes straight to me and he said, come. So I was wondering what he's saying, you know, that somebody said, go, 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 follow Baba, follow Baba. Yeah. So I went and uh, followed him into the interview room. And there, this entire conversation, both of us were standing, not sitting, both standing. And uh, actually, I don't recall much. I was in a sort of blur situation. Okay? And by that time, I'd gone to him. I had about 36 songs, something had come, had come to me. You know? Songs some of you may know, like Wife Here, When I'm Here. These are some of the songs, the early songs that come. That come. And uh, I had written these songs in a little booklet, booklet like this, okay? Uh, and I gave this book to Baba. I said, Swami, thank you for the songs, he said. I said. And Baba did something very unusual. He put his hands on my shoulder, looked into my eyes and said, Hey, don't worry. You're my instrument. Spread it, spread it, he said. Then I said, Swami, in Malaysia, Swami, I'm singing to your picture. Can I sing one song directly to you now? I said. Then he said, no, not now. You come in the afternoon again and you bring all the other Malaysians with you. But Swami, I, I'd gone alone. I didn't know any other Malaysian there. No? I said, Swami, I don't know any other Malaysian. No, no. There are 32 Malaysians outside in the crowd. There are about 1,000 people there at the time. Okay, You, you bring them along. So anyway, how I found them in the story. So now we're we, now we in the interview room in the afternoon. Now, this is a more unusual thing happened here. Okay, and This was among the many, many unusual events in my life. This was one of the super unusual. So I'm, and remember Baba said, you come and sing in the afternoon, okay? So I'm now sitting beside his chair. The crowd is in front of me, all listening. <coughs> and then people are asking questions and I kept quiet. And then suddenly Baba turned to me. He looked at, he looked at me and said, he said, I'm sitting beside him. He said, sing. So I, did what he, I sang this song. And many of you, I sang, it was in Tamil. Many of you don't know Tamil, but I shall give you a translation, okay? Here's how the song, song went, okay? So I have a little small drum here, which I'm going to play for all of you, but I didn't want to disturb you. So the song goes, goes like this, okay? Can you hear the drum? Can you hear the drum? Okay, good, all right. So the song goes like this. singing, no one can talk, but everybody is giving, Baba is sitting here beside me, and everybody is giving Baba pictures and books to sign. So Baba is busy signing away, signing away, you know, one after another. And then uh, he, when I came to this second verse, and here's the translation I give you, okay? No, Bhagavan, the first, the first few lines of Bhagavan, Bhagavan, I'm searching for you, you know, but the, but the third verse, the second verse is the most interesting. Sai Baba Unnai Ket Kindrain, Baba, I'm asking you, Ket Tade Niyum Kodupayo, will you give me what I asked for? And when I so said those words, Sai Baba Unnai Ket Kindrain, Ket Tade Niyum Kodupayo, Baba signing, and he turned to me and said, Kodupan, Kodupan. That means I'll give, I'll give, he said. I was so stunned, okay, but I continued the song. I yearn for your grace. Baba, will you come to me? Come to me. So when I said, where are you? So he's signing, still continuing signing. Then he said, then, where are you? Said, where are you? I'll come. Then he replied, where are you? Where are you? I'll come. I'll come. He said. It's like a joke, he said. Okay, you know. Of course, that stunned me a bit, but I continued your song. Tell you what is, after this incident, Okay, when I sing during bhajan, nothing happens. But whenever there's a need, whenever I'm in desperate trouble or something, nothing selfish, but I'm doing for others, okay? Really some wonderful miracles have happened. I shall share, I'll share this with you. 
as, as we go on. So this is the, the song that really changed my life. So anyway, so that is how my introduction to Swami and the songs. That, and then now, close to about 2,000 songs okay, have come. Uh, many of it in Tamil, but about 500, I think, in English. Uh, I've, I've got a song book, My Darling, for you. And, and there are English songs here, many English songs here, uh, which many of you may not have heard. But uh, maybe later I'll sing it. So this is the first uh, uh, miraculous incident. And ah, then, then I must tell you this. So during the interview, the interview, a lot of people were sitting about 10, remember about 30 or people were there. Uh, Baba turned to me. Don't forget that everybody, many of you assume that every Indian knows whatever Baba is speaking, okay? But no, we are Tamil, okay? So I only know, I don't know Hindi, nothing. So this... Uh, Suddenly, Baba turned to me and said, Jagadish, I want you to go back to Malaysia and to be president of the Sevadal. And then, everybody, I know what the meaning of Sevadal was. Okay? And I thought, since he used the word president, I thought he's asking me the president of the organization. There was no organization at the time. The two or three big groups were there. I thought he's asking me the president of one of the groups. He said, No, Swami, please, Swami, I'm very young, Swami. Ask somebody elder, Swami, to be the president. He said, No, no. Now in Malaysia, now he said this, like, he said, you know, Malaysia now, the devotees only singing, singing, singing. Now tell them, go and do service, go and do service. Do seva, do seva. So I'm thinking to myself, you know, I was director of investment in the Ministry of Industry at the time. Very busy fellow, you know, I go for morning meeting, then I, at the evening, I'm, I'm invited to cocktails, dinners, and ambassadors and heads of corporate sector will invite me, you know. So I'm very busy lifestyle. Uh, so I thought to myself, where well, I got time, you know, I'm so busy every evening going to all the cocktail dinners. So I said, Swami, uh, Swami, I, I got no time, Swami, I'm busy. I said, <laughs> then Swami ignored me and turned away. Uh, then he told me, then he suddenly turned and sing. Then only I sang this song. Okay. So anyway, so when I came back to Malaysia, I dare not tell anybody that Baba said, you know, be a president of Sevadal, okay. Looks absurd because the many elderly people were there. So I decided to keep quiet. Okay, then, but some the since about 30 odd people, others in the room, some youngsters came to me and said, Jaga, I understand that Baba asked you to present or say that. I said, Well, if I tell you, will you believe? Said, yeah, I will believe. So I said, Yeah, this is what Baba said. Okay. So okay, come, you start, we'll join you. So that's how the first I call it ISD, ISD, informal Sevada. I didn't want to register a, a, a society or whatever it is. So they used to come to my house, sit down and start singing all. English songs, Tamil songs, and all the North Indian songs, okay? So that was the beginning of uh, the journey. The journey. Then I wrote a book called Journey to God, okay? Part 1, Part 2, Part 3, Part 4. And some of you may know the Part 4 one, okay? Mm -hmm. is, uh, part 4 is uh, the uh, fourth dimension. My, my experience with the psychic phenomenon, African witch doctors and what have you, right? So that was uh, the journey, okay? So now, move to another aspect of the story okay uh, as you some of you may know i had a heart operation so how did this heart operation take place so i used to go to zambia at that time the un or unted you know, unted you know united nations center had asked me to become a consultant to the zambian government on how to develop the economy i, I think gene you know, knows all about this and uh, so they hired me to go as a consultant. And I was there for January, February, March, April for four, five, five months, okay. And they gave me a nice house, you know, with a driver and like a super VIP treatment. And uh, sometime after that, when I went to Zambia and I was, uh, every evening, you know, I'll, start, I'll go jogging, okay. I'll go from my house to some field nearby. My wife doesn't know where I've gone. I just disappear into a field. And I, and I always, I speak to Swami. Okay, many of you will find it a bit absurd. I speak to Swami every time about everything I do. Swami, should I do this? Should I do this? And he gives me direct answers. Okay. So I'll ask Swami, should I go jogging today? He said, yes, you do. How many minutes, Swami? He'll tell me, okay, today, half an hour, you do. So when I went to this field and I was jogging, the first round, when I finished the first round, my heart, my, I had a tremendous pain in my chest. Okay, I said, what the hell? And then I stopped for a while, then the pain will go away. Then I continued jogging until I finished my half, half an hour quota. 
So I come home, come home back to my house, and I'll tell my wife, hey, I think my chest has shrunk. Okay? What do you mean? No, I'm having this intense pain, but now the pain has gone away. So we didn't think much of it. I just thought, my, really thought my chest had shrunk. Okay? But if I, if I jog enough, then the, my chest will expand. Okay? So every day I'll go there and come back and say, my chest has shrunk. So one day, I, I, a few months later, I was going to go to Zambia again. Uh, and just before I went to Zambia, I was in the, and I'm a member of a, of a club, okay? And I was there in the club going for the sauna and exercise. And there was a doctor's, there are doctors in the room. So I told the hey, doc, can you tell me, when I do jogging, I'm having this, this, this intense pain you know, that comes up. You think my chest is shrunk? I asked him. The doctor looked at me as I was mad. Hey, Jaga, what's wrong with you, okay? You better go and check out. Have you had a have you had a heart check out? I said, no, go and check it out. It could be something dangerous, could be nothing. But get your heart checked out. But he was so nervous and and and, uh, and worried. I decided, well, he's worried, transferred to me. So I decided to go and check out. So I went to this stress test for the heart stress test. And my God, within second second level, the doctor said, stop, stop, Jaga, stop, please stop. I said, why well, I'm feeling okay. No, stop. Jaga, something's wrong with you. You better get a, a full what, a heart checkup. So I went and did a heart checkup, and then they said, Jaga, you have got um, three blocks. Three blocks, serious blocks. No exercise for you. You cannot fly now. Don't fly. You'll die. I said, My God, this is a bit extreme, you know, these guys. So I said, Okay, okay, doc, okay, doc. So immediately I went back and told my wife, the Doctor, I'm to do operation. Okay, first let's ask Baba. So we didn't tell the doctor, we got the flight next day or two days later, flew to India. And then Baba called me for interview. And uh, in the interview, in the, I know, sorry, didn't call me for interview at that time. I, I remember I arrived there one, uh, just about next day after mm -hmm. Guru Purnima, you know. And, uh, and uh, the crowd was packed, packed. I go and sit in the veranda normally. And the veranda was full. Everybody was jam-packed. Everybody was waiting to go to see Baba. To say goodbye to him, okay. So no one is giving any space for anyone. Then then someone asked me, Jaga, well, why you came late? I said, you know, I, I went for a heart operation, heart examination. Doctor say I've got a heart problem. Well, did you You must see the like like a like a like a sea, like this, uh, how the sea parted, you know, for Moses to cross the the, the sea, okay. The, all, the devotees there, the leaders there who are waiting there, they all were so sympathetic, you know. They began to give way, they give way to Jaga, give way to Jaga. So they made me move forward, forward until I was sitting right in front of the of the of the mandir uh, where the cars pass by. Okay, and on that day, of course, of all the days, that day, Baba didn't mm -hmm. come by the car. Somebody pushed him, you know, in the with the uh, wheelchair, and he came in front of me and stopped. I said, Swami, and I gave him a note. I said, I don't, I don't ask him to cure me nothing. I said, if I'm going to go heart operation, that's my the karma. So I asked him only two questions. I put a Swami. Doctor say I, I got a heart problem. Swami, number one, should I do operation? Number two, where should I do it? That's all I want to know. So Baba looked at the, he took the piece of paper. There's a beautiful picture of me standing beside Baba, you know, and he's, he's, I'm talking to him. And then they wheeled him away. He didn't reply. They wheeled him away. Then I waited for one day, second day. Meantime, some doctor friends came to my house and they came to my room and they saw my, my, my medical report. Chega, don't go for darshan. I said, why? Don't you understand how serious you are? You collapse and die, you know. I said, don't worry. Why well, don't try and scare me? I'm feeling okay. Anyway, he, they quickly can bought these pills, you know, you put under the tongue, you know. I don't know what you call it. Uh, and they said, yeah, you take this now. If anything happens, you put it under your tongue. So after two days, I sent my wife to go and see the brother Chakravati, you know. Chakravati was there when I, when I spoke to Baba. So I go and check with Chakravati, what, any news. Then uh, what... Uh, the new, he, when he saw my wife, he said, hey, where's Jaga? Swami tell, 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 tell Jaga, Swami said, do operation, go back to Malaysia and do it. Don't do it here. And I was wondering why, but now the people later, Jaga, the Baba made a very good decision for you because in your home, in Malaysia, you have a lot of support of people there with you, okay? Here in Potapati, you'll be sitting in a room all alone, only your wife, and you, you won't have any support. She'll be very, very stressed out. So you go and do your operation in Malaysia. Or the, so I flew to Malaysia and we had the operation. And the doctor, that's a very interesting, the guy who did the operation was a guy called Dr. Venugopal. And he so happened that he is a son-in-law 
of the head of the super specialty hospital in in uh, in uh, whitefield mm -hmm. so he was very happy he knows about me i had not met him before but he has heard about me and he was very happy ah oh, mary jaka don't worry i'll look after you so the operation was done now here comes a very moving story okay so at that time i was two weeks two weeks i was supposed to leave for zambia for another of my official official visits okay so now i could not go so i wrote to the zambian president i was working with the zambian president's uh, advisor i said uh, his name is jack kalala jack i said i got a good news bad news uh, the, the bad news is that uh, the bad news is that uh, i've got to go for a heart operation <coughs> the good news is that if the operation succeeds i'll come back to you so that was so the, i just wrote like that and i did the operation and the operation after about uh, one month i was perfectly back okay and i decided to go get back to zambia now here's a very moving story i am working there <coughs> as an economic consultant to the zambian officials and the advisor to the president and so so i wrote finally when i am going to go and i told him guys i got good news bad news for you again the good news is that operation was successful the bad news is that i am coming back so then the 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 advisor to the president all the zambia is a christian country eh? all the guys of course different different christian groups okay and the zambian president's advisor jack kalala is name very nice man he replied to me you know jaga he emailed me <coughs> i said we have been here been praying for your operation to succeed i'm so happy that you the operation successful now i'm going to tell you something <coughs> you ought to me in the letter you know, as blasphemous as this may sound this is the exact word no? as blasphemous as this may sound you coming back to us <coughs> is like jesus coming back to his disciples there was this tears can my son and told him okay? i'm working there as an economic consultant yet i've conveyed to them the love that swami has shared with us <coughs> for him to write such words okay anyway so i went back to zambia and proceed my work there because now my work in zambia is over so that was a very very interesting episode of uh, my heart heart operation okay then i went back to to puttapati before i went overseas again and swami swami sitting on the veranda you know in a the chair there i was sitting in a chair because i could not sit on the floor because that my legs had been cut up so he saw me he came towards me you know then he looked at me and said ah how operation and he was like swami operation very successful swami as he is talking to me everybody many people notice this he is standing in front of me i am kneeling in front of him he kept doing this you know he was sort of like a flicking some dust from my shirt like that i didn't notice it but many not many noticed it he said jaga why was swami doing that doing what he was sort of taking some dust from your shirt i think i don't know but here what is when mm -hmm. i came to puttapati the car the roads are very 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 uh, bad okay they they are very bumpy so i had to hold a pillow to my chest all the time you know because the the, of the, op the operation is hurting me badly but then when I, when this time we are going back i took the pillow and i holding my chest again okay then i said hey baba has that did this you know maybe the pain is over let me test and see so i took the pillow put it aside and let, let's see what happened there what is the pain had subsided tremendously okay not that there was no pain there was slight slight pain but not in the way it was in the very beginning then my wife said hey don't test baba okay you put your pillow and you carry on so like that dear everybody that, that journey was over and i returned to malaysia and continued my work in zambia okay so this is the the big drama here of uh, of my my heart operation and baba's real blessing enough for me that he asked me to go back to malaysia and do the though i could have done the heart operation put up with yourself but you know i am a government servant 
So for me, the, any heart operation I do, Malaysia is free for me, okay? So why should I go and take away somebody's privilege in Puttaparthi itself? So I went back and did that free. So, uh, so that's one adventure I had. So like the daily devotees, a number of uh, adventures I've had, okay? So sometime after that, um, my wife and I went for a holiday in Finland. And in Finland, <coughs> my wife has done some horse riding, you know. I mean, not any major, just trotting, trotting there. Right? And she was dying to do uh, some horse riding in Finland. So we decided to went around looking for, for, horse, for a ranch or something. But we couldn't find one so easily. So I told her, listen, maybe Baba doesn't want us to have, a, uh, have any horse riding. No, no, no. She, you know, she's very determined. So she finally, finally, she managed to find a place, and we went to uh, this ranch. And you know, these Finnish horses, uh, not like American horses, are quite low. These are huge, tall fellows, you know, reddish in color, and these are race horses. Okay. So we went there, and then there was, then we had to use a ladder and to get on, sit on the horse. And uh, so we decided. So there was a lady who was a guide, and me and my wife. Trotting beside. Now we went in a full full, full circle around the around the uh, the ranch. Okay. And now we are we are coming back to the last leg of the journey. The lady, our guide, was going in front. My wife was second, and I'm third. As we are about to reach the don't forget. Okay, the road that was leading to the the house was gravel. The small patch of grass by the side, very significant this one, okay? So we are reaching, as we reach the junction where we're supposed to get across to the gravel side, suddenly the horse which my wife was riding on sensed that they were near home. So that fellow started to struggle with my wife and started getting agitated. My wife tried to pull the reins and, and to, and to what, uh, control him. The fellow got upset with her, I think. And he tried to throw her. Now, suddenly the horse and my wife all together fell. And beside the lane we were in, there was a swamp, like a swampish, muddy, muddy, muddy swamp thing. Okay? So the horse fell, my wife fell, and all disappeared into the water. And I'm standing there watching what the hell is happening. Okay, And then that suddenly we saw the horse getting out of the swamp. Okay. The flood just leapt out of the swamp. My wife's missing and started running. My horse was a race horse. So he saw the horse running. That guy started, wanted to, he started struggling with me and started following, want to follow that first horse. And I'm trying to hold the reins of the horse, okay? I'm trying to follow him. Yo, whoa, 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 stop, stop, stop. Maybe he understand English, okay? And that fellow refused to uh, what, uh, give, give me any, 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 any strength, okay? He pushed on, then suddenly he got angry with me. He reared, like not like this Lone Ranger, you know, like high or silver, like that. That guy reared up and threw me. So now I am flying in the sky, flying up above. And as I fly, as I turn, I could see myself turning around. And if I had fallen on the gravel, I would have been hurt badly. But some miraculous thing, the small strip of green grass by the side, I fell back, back first onto the green grass. Pop, I fell. Of course, it, it took all the air out of my body and I'm struggling. I couldn't breathe for a while, okay? And then, then suddenly I recovered. Meantime, no sign of my wife. Meantime, I look around, I see her walking out of the swamp and she's holding her, 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 her cheeks, her, her chin like this. And she, and she started told me later, I was wondering, here I fall in the swamp, what are you resting on the... On the Resting on the on the ground there, and I said, then we explain what happened. The horse, when it came out, you know, he just kicked her. Luckily, he just kicked her in the face. Okay, kicked her in the chin. You could see the hoof marks, you know, on the chin. Uh, and so we decided not to take. Ask her, we'll take it to hospital. She said, no, 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 not necessary. So we took some ice and this thing and put on her, and we went back. And of course, that particular thing somehow was not gad, no bones broken, nothing. Meantime. No bones broken for me also. Though it, I, I flew up in the sky and fell backwards. Now the funny thing is, the funny thing here, 
few or two or three a few months before that or two months or three months before that i was in zambia and doing my work there and i was in this house in zambia they gave me a nice house okay because i was sort of a vip guest house okay so i was coming down the steps and i slipped and i fell and rolled down the steps okay ding, 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 ding. and uh, i sort of hurt my back a bit i think no bone broken but hurt my back a bit sprained a bit so now after this incident of this horse throwing me and i'm falling down flat on my back i got up and amazingly the pain that it, that it was there for the when i roll down the steps okay the pain disappeared now i'm fe- feeling perfectly fit went back to malaysia went to a doctor doctor said jaga any bones broken no 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 you mean no bones broken no in fact the pain also disappeared doctor said jaga this is unusual normally when people get thrown by horses they come here their bones are broken or finger are broken or arms are broken you're telling me nothing happened you've improved yourself i said yeah that is i said that's god's grace i said okay anyhow so there was a horse incident now the horse incident had another impact on me so suddenly after some time i began to feel sometimes dizzy okay uh, a bit blurred a bit and i was wondering why so when the doctor check check the doctors the doctor asked me jaga have you fallen actually i had fallen a number of times okay once i fell in uh, down around roll down the steps then another time i fell from the horse then a third time i fell uh, in in uh, in a ayurvedic clinic you know the kind of floor was slippery but is it doctor you see, jaga you see what happened now? the water has come into your brain the important thing is they check the fact i have brains there was a relief the water has gone in so you got to do uh, uh, surgery and remove the water so what they did was now here's an amazing thing they, you can't see it here but they drilled a hole here and they put a pipe into my body and brought the water down to my stomach and expelled it that way so i'm the only so now i said how long must i keep this pipe yeah, forever so there's the pipe now going straight down my body into my into my stomach from my brain so all the water filters out so i don't sound too crazy nowadays you know so though some people think i'm crazy but i'm i do all my exercise now i do jogging i do so i'm feeling i'm back to my to my great fitness level okay so that was uh, how this uh, the surgery started with this with the brain surgery uh, to get water out of my brains anyway i think the water is gone when i shake my head i can't hear glip 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 what is gone so there was a the finish uh, incident and the major incident happened okay in my life you know? how sami communicates with me again and uh, then some of you may know during the afghan uh, war afghan pakistan uh, during the afghan war uh, the afghanis refugees uh, had had uh, took shelter in a in a refugee camp at the border of afghanistan and pakistan so we heard about this this uh, this particular thing and we said hey let's help them la and guys so what to do so we knew that afghan never in pakistan at that period that means november december is going to become very cold okay so we decided to do a project to deliver blankets to the afghanistan uh, refugee camps so we managed to get about 700 blankets okay to be sent by ship from uh, malaysia to uh, karachi pakistan uh, port then from there go by lorry into the into this uh, refugee camp now very interesting i myself and three or four others were supposed to go but then when i asked baba should we go baba said yes you go then i asked swami okay i'll i'll go with this group okay baba said no let them go you don't go i was a bit stunned swami how can i tell these people to go to afghanistan you know the dangerous area you know and i don't go no you don't go let them go i will look after them so then we made arrangement i managed we managed to meet uh, uh, then i said my god this is a very bad situation how can i don't go so i said okay uh, there was at the time a medical team from the malaysian armed defense ministry of defense uh, going to afghanistan to the border camp you know border of pakistan and, and afghanistan so so i said okay guys uh, since baba said i don't go i don't know why but you all go i arrange for your safety okay so with 700 700 blanket something uh, we heard that the minister of defense 
That time, the, the that time the Minister of Defence was Najib, the present or the erstwhile Prime Minister. So I knew him. So we decided to then normally he never invites me for this Hari Raya, you know, this Hari Raya what celebration. On that day when I came back to my house to my office, I received a letter from his office inviting me to his Hari Raya celebration in his house. I said, "Wow, how come he's inviting me?" So let, let, let's go. So we went to what uh, my salon to, uh, to one other went to to his uh, house for this uh, Hari Hari Raya like Christmas line. You know, all of you know Eid Eid they call it. He went there, the huge car parks were everywhere. You know. So we walked up, and I said, "I know how we are going to meet him." Okay, there will be so many super VIPs waiting to see him. He was the dep, he was the dep, dep. And so, uh, and so, what uh, we went up. I said, "I don't know how we are going to see him, but let's try our luck." Lah. So we went to the went to the main gate. And there he was there at the gate, sending people off. There were a lot of super VIPs around him, so I'm standing there watching. Hey, so many people there. How are we to go? I thought. And suddenly, as I'm standing there watching, suddenly the crowd around him disperses, and suddenly he's sitting alone, standing alone. So I said, "Let's go." So when he knows me, okay, the the, the, the time that now that he became prime minister, something like that. The one involved in the one MDB problems, okay, and. I went up to him, sir. I said, hey, yes, yes, Jigri. Uh, thank you for coming. No, sir, I, I've come here not as a guest, but I got a problem for you. For you to help me. So I told him about this blanket problem we want to send to. So your so your your defense ministry is sending a, a medical team to to the border zone. Uh, can they? Can my team join the defense team uh, and go with them so they get protection? He said, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. You you speak to what a uh, what a Colonel Abdullah. Um, Speak to him. He is leading the team. So I said, "Where's Colonel Abdullah, sir?" No, no, he's somewhere there. He said, "So I'm standing there, wondering how am I going to find Colonel Abdullah? One thousand people in the crowd. Okay, you won't believe her." Huh? As I turn, then he tells me, "Ah, there he is." And the Colonel Abdullah happened to be just standing, you know, about hundred feet from us. So the Colonel Abdullah saw us coming from the Deputy Prime Minister to see this, to see him. So he said, "Then we explained to what Abdullah like, we're going to any. Can we join your forces again okay, to go with them?" He said, "Okay, so now that's settled. So my protection for the team that's going is that. Only thing I still haven't figured out why is that I'm not allowed to go. Okay, this I feel very bad about it. Okay, because I'm asking these youngsters to go there, and I'm I'm not going. So, but then the answer came to me. The day then they're flying, they go to this. The day my team went to the airport to take off, I'm driving to the airport to see them off, and as I'm driving, my phone rings." And my sister is on the line and telling me, brother, my you know I have only one blood brother. Okay, I have hundreds of of side brothers like like Jean uh, Macy. You now only one blood brother. The blood brother has had a heart attack. He has been admitted to the hospital. And that was a stunning thing for me, you know, because if I if I'd been at the airport ready to fly, I'd have to cancel the flight and get get to the airport. I was only Only living with brother for him, okay. So then I realized why Baba said, "See how Baba predicted this." Now. He said, "You don't go," and I stayed with him, and I and I was with him all the time, prayed for him, and helped. In his, now he's now he's okay now. You know, then he subsequently now he's in New Zealand. He can survive that. So this is the kind of real incredible miracles you know, that Baba intervened into our daily lives, okay. You know, and and. There is a there is a saying you know that I want to share with you, which Baba has used, you know, uh, and uh, it, that, that word. Remember this word. It's called Yoga Shema, Y O G A S H E M A, Yoga Shema. So Baba used, used many of us when we read Baba's speeches, you know, the moment we come to a Sanskrit word, that we just skip and carry on. We don't we don't know the meaning, but we just carry on, okay. But yoga shema Baba mentioned number of times. So I was wondering, what is this yoga shema? So I checked it out. So I'm not a Baba Gita man, okay? No, I'm a Sanskrit man. I checked it out, and the yoga shema means this. Yoga shema means it's a saying. Krishna. Now don't forget, in the Baba Gita, Krishna is speaking to Arjuna in the battlefield. Okay. Yoga shema means 
it's a divine assurance it is dedicate yourself to me and do my work i will look after your yoga shema dedicate yourself to me and do my work i will look after your yoga shema yoga shema means whatever you have in life i will preserve for you whatever you need in life i will give you that's a divine assurance so dear god is everybody who goes to a temple church mm-hmm. buddhist temple what a mosque mm-hmm. and to sai baba centers you know they go only for this okay so i mean what they were asking they are in their mind they are saying god dedicate and de- i give me what i need in life uh, dedicate yourself to do my work i will look after like my yoga shema so whatever i have in life preserve for me what i need in life give me that is what everybody asks without even mentioning those words and then what is that's why i tell people nowadays in, in my center in bangsa in, in malaysia i tell them this yoga shema is a divine assurance given but you want you want mm-hmm. Baba, god to preserve whatever you have and give whatever you need not whatever you want whatever you want even god cannot give okay but the pre condition of this is dedicate yourself to me do my work and then i look after you the same so this particular incidents i've had now with baba and this is going to what uh, the afghan afghanistan pakistan border and many other incidents all of you heard about of the rain story i think we will tell you the rain story later but uh, there is a uh, what uh, there is a uh, one more fantastic incident people always ask me jaga how you talk to baba at first one or two days i used to tell people how i am communicating with him but then baba said don't tell anybody now uh, later you when after you gone you you can write about it and let people know so i don't tell anybody what, how i communicate with him but i communicate directly with him and he gives me specific answers to specific questions so he has a dramatic story another dramatic story i share with you it's called the rain story okay in in, in, in malaysia Jean, how are you doing for time? About uh, five or ten minutes, Jagan. Okay. Wait. Okay, five or ten minutes. The rain story is too long. My wife says that the rain story is too long. Hey, just tell us to summarize it. Huh? Another time, brother. Another time. Because it's a very dramatic story. Uh, that uh, it's a incredible. It's like a movie kind of uh, situation. Uh, that story. Uh, uh you know i bet some people have some questions jaga that would uh, okay. if you've got 10 minutes left i'm i'm sure many people uh, have have questions okay fine uh, fine Let, let's take the question now. so if you would uh anybody that has a question if you'd unmute yourself and just ask jaga now if you have a question um uh, uh about to his experience or about uh some one some of the things that we should do now or anything if you have a question like that anybody have a question okay well i have a question and uh you know my question is many people are suffering now and difficulties not only that but since swami's gone i make a joke sometimes i say it's very hard to squeeze swami into your schedule now you know we don't have the attendance that we once had we don't have the uh opportunity to do service right now they've not given us they've asked us not to do the service because of the virus and everything so many of us are sad many of us are are troubled that we don't have uh uh swami in our lives anymore as as he once was you know you could actually go to puja party and see him and now many people have lost this um as we as the song says we've lost that love and feeling you know <laughs> and so <laughs> uh what should we do how can we how can we get that back now at this time you see brother in fact now now it's easier because those days unless you're someone sitting on the veranda <coughs> you have no access easy access to swami you're sitting in a crowd there with about 10000 people or 5000 people beside you behind or behind you and and unless you imagine get token first row token or second row token there's no way for you to get get near him but those people in vanda still the vanda people like you you know 
or people like what uh, all the other le leaders, you know, they're sitting in the veranda. And they have, in fact, even people like me, I mean, we have access to Swami by sitting in the veranda, okay. But now, Swami, Swami has suddenly, because of this now, He has made Himself universal. He has made Himself universal. Everybody has direct access to Him. The question is, Yoga Shema effect. Dedicate yourself to me, do my work. Then I'll look after you. You don't do, you sit down and sing bhajan, you think because that God must come to you because you sing bhajan. Everybody sings bhajan. Everybody sings God's songs. We call it bhajans, but the, the Christian tradition has, has hymns they sing. Uh, the, the Hindu traditions have bhajans. Everybody is singing songs, okay? So singing song is good because it gives us a chance to communicate with divinity, you know. But it is what you do with your time. What do you do with your, how are you spending your time dedicating yourself to the divine mission? You need not do great things, you know. I always tell people, you know the story of the of the uh, of the, the squirrel. The squirrel in uh, in the uh, Ramayana, uh, Rama led the the army of the huge bears and 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 monkeys to the border, to the coastline of of, of South India and Sri Lanka, you know. And all these this, this big gigantic bears were and and monkeys were taking stones, huge stones, and throwing into the ocean. To create this now they call it Adam's Bridge or something you know that, that, that bridge and the four stones were floating there in the water and out of the blue this little squirrel comes to Rama and says Rama excuse me can I also join to help build the bridge so small fellow you know so Rama said yes I bless you do it so this fellow will go to the he'll go to the the, the shore you know, and he'll 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 roll around in the in the in the sand then he'll take the sand, he'll go to the to the where the bridge has been built, he'll shake his body like this, and the sand will spill on the on the on the bridge. Then he'll go back and roll again and go back and shake again. And can, you can imagine what's happening, right? Every time he shakes, one wave comes and all the sand is gone. But he kept on doing this, doing this, doing this, okay. Now, that Rama Avatar today as such as I has not talked specifically about the big bears and the and the huge monkeys that except Anuman who went to help build the bridge. But he talked about the squirrel. How the squirrel came and asked Rama that I want to help you build the bridge. So it is not the quantum of work you do. It is the 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 heart we have got to do this kind of work, you know. However small it may be. Sometimes sometimes when I always think to myself, you know, see here I am going around the world like, like this, talking all kinds of things. But the next, next avatar, they will not even mention what uh, Jagadishan. They'll mention about this old lady in the Sai Baba Center in in, in uh, what uh, in uh, in your your center or in Malaysia. How she used to go painstakingly decorate the altar and go back home without even attending the bhajan. He may mention that lady, but not the guys who did the massive things okay, like the squirrel. So, my best advice is dedicate yourself to me. Do my work. Swami says, doesn't matter the quantum of work you do, but are you dedicating and doing yourself? Okay? Small work it can be, but do the work. Divinity knows the work we do. Don't worry about others not knowing enough. Okay? Divinity knows. Like this, brother, I've had some incredible. Uh, here, I, let me tell you in the short time I've got only one little story here. In the early days of the Sai uh, movement you know, in Malaysia, I had very few people, you know, sub subsequent, subsequently grew big. And we had, we needed uh, equipment, you know, for, we used to go to temples, you know, small small temples or small home uh, communities, okay, and sing bhajans. So we needed, that time there were no mics there, you know, so we needed to get some portable mic. Then I heard about national, national semiconductors, you know, the Panasonic. They had come out with a, with a mobile uh, what, uh, a transmitter, you know, a mobile unit. That you can mm -hmm. plug it somewhere and you can use a mic and the, you can do 100 feet away or 100 yards away and you can and the sound comes out very nicely. So then uh, at that time my late wife, you know, uh, she decided to, so why don't we buy one of this? Since we, because people started taking our our FM set, okay, our radio to take there and use it using the, the FM mic. I said, and then began to damage my my, my, my compo set. Also. So, okay, I said, all right, we'll see. But I, I said, where is this? Uh, I'm begging money to buy this kind of thing, you know. I don't have the money. So we'll see, I said. So this is 
one episode that, that took place. Okay, now watch now. What the yoga shame I find here. A few days later, a few days later, I had an incident whereby one lady, one uh, Chinese lady, uh, comes to my house and says, uh, uh, "Mr. Jaga, uh, I want to talk to you." I said, "Yes." What is it? Then she tells me that she uh, as is working as a, as a, she just become a side devotee. But she's, her work is being a masseur, you know, in the Hilton Hotel or somewhere, you know, for, for massaging people. So she said, you know, now I've become Baba devotee. This is my masseur. I work, work I do. You know, I, I feel so shy, you know, I'm doing this work, you know, with all the men's bodies, I'm doing this work. I don't know whether Baba will be happy, but I don't know any other profession I've got. It's the only profession I've got, you know. Uh, so I'm wondering, what am I to answer? <laughs> you know, I said, I said, Ma, listen, don't worry. Doing the dealing with the human body, even doctors do that. The psychics, you know, physiotherapists all do work with the human body. There's no problem. You do what you want to do, as long as you're not ashamed to tell somebody you love and respect what you do. It's okay. Go and do it. Wow, she felt that that's a hell of an example. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She was so happy. You know, oh, thank you, thank you, Mr. Jaga. Thank you, he said. And she left. Okay. Now that, that, that is one incident happened. A few days later, for Matsushita in Japan, some big bosses arrived. And the Matsuchita manager, the Panasonic manager in KL, I knew very well because we were working together to bring more projects to Malaysia from Matsushita. And uh, he calls me. Jagasam, he knows I'm in Sai Baba. He knows all the work I'm doing. For ma many, many months, he, he knows what I'm doing. He calls me out of the book. Jagasam, tell me the work you're doing. Huh? Oh, I'm very happy of the work you're doing. I said, suddenly, why is this guy calling me, telling me that? Uh, I said, yeah, tell me, what, what can I give you? To help you in your work. I said, Takashi san, his name is Takashi, Takashi san, why suddenly you're calling me? No, no, I just want to know how, in what way I can help you in the work you're doing. Takashi san, I don't need anything from you, but tell me why are you asking me this? Out of the blue, I've known you for several, two, one or two years, and suddenly you're suddenly asking me this. Then he tells me an amazing story. His bosses from Japan had come, and in Hilton Hotel, one of the hotels, they gone to this place where they do these masseurs, you know, the massage, okay? And uh, the Japanese like this massage thing, so they're doing massage. And he was in one room, and there was this lady, and she was having a chain with Baba's picture on it. So this gentleman, this friend of mine, Takashi, he took and saw this Baba's picture. He recognized Baba from the pictures I have, you know, in my office and in my house. Mm -hmm. He said, Oi, you also believe in this man? He said, Yes. Oh, I know this man. His name is Jagadeesan. Then she said, you know Jagadeesan? Oh my God. Then she went on a spiral telling him, telling him, what a fantastic fellow I am. What, how I'm helping people. She went, this guy got stunned. How this Chinese lady knows Jaga and talking so much, so much good about him. So he said, Jaga, I understand now. You're doing so much good for people, okay? So tell me what I can do for you. This is two weeks after the day, time I, my, my wife wanted to get uh, my late wife wanted to get the, the speaker i said okay i tell you if you really want to help huh, you give me a speaker i need i need this mobile speaker because mm -hmm. we go around uh, what uh, giving what a uh, lot of talks okay uh, done three days later the mobile speaker arrived my house as a gift from matsushita there was brother yoga shema you know you see so you do his work and he will find a way to to do to, to, like this are many many incredible uh, incidents have happened, okay. So my, same as what you are doing, like Jim, John, you used to go to the prison, you used to work with the prisoners or, or the naughty boys, you know, whatever it is. And and God has blessed you. With, with, of course, he put you into a mill, okay. <laughs> but, you know, yes, indeed. Yeah. But that's a, that's part of the, part of the journey, love, before the diamond gets polished, okay. It must be cut and, and polished. I've gone through a lot of mills, as I know, you know, my my, my first wife passed away, my youngest son passed away, you know. Yes. So, we went through, went through a lot of tragedy. But at the same time, huh? ah, okay, and another one. You know the house I'm staying in? Uh, I think Jean, you have my house, I think, in Bangsa. I'm not too sure. This house where we have Bajan said. You've had a, tell them how you've had a center in your home for how many years? Yeah, yeah, okay. For close to 40 years, I, I, First, people used to come into my hall, and the bhajans were held there. 
and the crowd would spill over you know to the garden we had a french window they opened up and and then when it rains you know everybody will panic you know, you know and run around and, and i'm sitting comfortably right in front one of the thing baba told me when he told me you have bhajan in your house i said swami you said i told swami swami but you said don't have bhajan swami i read you know baba told some people don't have bhajan in your house so i said swami i thought you said don't have bhajan in the house no no i said that but you have bhajan in your house because you know why i why swami says don't have bhajan in the house because often the house is small all very crowded you know you know but your hall i know i know you got nice hall big hall he said <laughs> and you got a big hall your wife is very comfortable then also many people when they bhajan in the house they will tell this person cannot come this person cannot come ah, yes 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 exactly right so but you won't be like that you will allow everybody to come into the house for bhajan okay so you have bhajan now so that's how i started having bhajan in the house mm-hmm. and then the crowd became too big and then i built this hall at the back i took a government loan i took a bank loan from the government and everybody wanted to be donate money for the, for the for the building at the back then i said no no I, in, in my property i don't want people to say my jagat took money from all of you i'll take a loan so i took a loan from the bank and built this hall at the back and told the center center is yours do what you want so like that for many years but now mm-hmm. i came into some some financial distress okay so i i was short of funds and i had to borrow would you believe i borrowed about 800000 dollars from uh, listen ring it from from friends you know who the bank refused to give me loan because i'm unemployed and i'm retired so you they're not giving me loan right so solve the income so i went to friends friends donated gave me about 800000 uh, ring it okay to sustain me for three years okay so finally huh uh, because we did rebuild this house and some renovation we did so this was we were desperate for money you know but then what happened was uh, then i decided to sell this house mm-hmm. yeah and the anyway, reason we we had an apartment that we were hoping to sell but the delay of the building the apartment by the contractors put us in a real financial bind okay so anyway, so we managed we, we decided to sell this house so i told my wife and my daughter they said they are both agreed yes you can papa you can sell because we are short of funds you know and then i told the sai, the sai committee the bangsa committee guys i'm sorry for 40 years the committee did not pay one cent for the use of the premises okay i financed everything it was working you know and i had some money you know and i my expense is not much okay so i don't smoke i don't drink i don't party around no. basically swami was my life so i buy build the thing and now i then finally i told the committee i'm so sorry guys i'm going to i got to sell this house i got no more money left to mm-hmm. survive and so what uh, i must i'm so sorry so anyway so now we now watch now this you have seen this house right it's a big house and it's got another ho- big hall at the back i built it a quite a huge establishment uh, a house with a, a bedrooms and all this thing and then a hall at the back where we have our uh, bhajans and meetings and everything going on so who would buy such a huge property you know you know and as wondering how, how do i get anyone to buy such a property okay how do i go and find someone how many i'm go around the begging bowl and say would you buy this property by you know what such a big property how much you know, like this few million dollars are going to cost them amazingly this is yoga shema again within four days of me declaring that i'm going to buy this house how to sell this house one man approaches me and said jaga i understand you're going to sell this house i said yes i'll buy it i said what yeah i'll buy it. how much baba gave me a figure this guy this guy gave me a figure very close to what baba had mentioned so it is slightly lower than what what baba had suggested but it is it is enough for what we wanted okay yeah because and now on top of that because of of this covid okay we okay. property prices have gone down and nobody was buying property you know but now this guy said i'll buy and the amazing thing is this guy happened to be quite close to my house okay <laughs> so he he wanted this house to attach to his house also so within 4 5 days of me declaring i want to sell this house somebody had approached me and said i'll buy without me looking for the guy now watch now then we needed at the house i must move to the house no one that sell this house so i told my wife please we when i came to the house you decided to follow me here now you choose what house you want you choose where where you want to go and stay with you go 
So she kept quiet for one week and one week. Okay, let's go today. We're going to look at four houses. So I said, okay. So we went to the first house. I didn't like it. She also didn't like second house. I didn't like. She didn't like third house. The fourth house. We went approached her. It is amazing. I walked into the house. And I felt as though the house was welcoming me, you know, come. It was an amazing feeling. And then I thought, my God, I can't say I want the house because I promised my wife that she will choose, okay? Then when we finished to look at the house, you know, then we're going in the car. I asked my wife, what do you think? Then my wife said, let's buy this house. So, and the house, the amount they was offering was much, very much adequate from the funding we had, okay? So we bought them. Can you imagine that it was within one month of me wanting to sell one house and buy another house, we got both. This is Yoga Shema. So I 100% believe in Yoga Shema. As I tell the youth nowadays, you know, not they worry, oh, if I do all the Swami's work, what about my office work, all this, you know, don't worry. Baba will look after it, okay? You, you will succeed in your office work. Okay? That's why a lot of people now go around Happy to go and do Swami's work with you. Jagger, we, ladies. We want to yes, thank sir. you very much for speaking tonight with us and giving us these wonderful words. And uh, it's a, you know, it's people don't realize it, but it's a piece of history. A hundred years from now, they'll look back, or two hundred years from now, they'll look back on these times and and be hungry for words of people that knew Swami. And we're so grateful to have had you with us tonight. And uh, we're going to turn it over to Daniela now, who is going to finish with the prayers and uh, the closing prayers. And, and so we want to thank you again. If you, if you need to go, uh, fine. If not, you can stay. Brother, can I, can I just finish with one English song? Yes, please. You all please. sang, you all sang yes. Indian songs. Let the Indians okay. sing English song. <laughs> okay. Uh, Okay, let me finish this, okay? Some of you may have heard the song, but long time, one of my early songs, okay? Okay, here we go, okay? In the sound of silence is the voice of God. In the laughter of children is the voice of God. In the songs of prayers are the sounds of God. Listen well and hear the sounds of God. There are those who see but not the signs of God. See the work of man, not the work of God. Look around and recognize the Lord. The beauty of nature is the work of God. There are those who hear, but not the voice of God. Hear the sounds of man, not the sounds of God. Listen well and hear the voice of God. The beauty of nature are the sounds of God. The sounds of nature are the songs of God. Sairam, Sairam, Sairam.